Hello guys, welcome to the next video on JavaFX tutorial for beginners. In the last video, we have seen what are properties in JavaFX and how to use properties in JavaFX. Now in this video, we will see what is binding and how to use binding in JavaFX. And we will see how to use specifically unidirectional binding in JavaFX. So first of all, what is binding? So JavaFX property binding allows you to synchronize the value of two properties so that whenever one of the property changes, the value of other property is also changed or updated automatically, right? So for binding, you need to have properties. Now there are two types of binding. One is unidirectional binding, which we are going to see in this video. And other is bidirectional binding, which we will see in the next video how to use it. So let's get started and see how unidirectional binding works in JavaFX. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the last video code, which I have shown you in the last video. So in the last video, we have created this class in which we have created the number property and we have set the getter and setter for this property and we have created a extra function to access this property, right? And in the controller, what we were doing is whenever we click the button, it was changing the property and as a result, it was displaying the number on the label, right? So just we will continue from the last video. So if you haven't seen the last video, just see it and use the same code in this video. Okay. Now what we are going to do first is we will open our main.fxml file. I have already opened it. And in the last video, we have uh, used a label and a button. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to the controls and I'm going to use one more button here. So this button I'm going to use to uh, increment the value and second button I'm going to use to decrement the value. And let's say we are going to use uh, progress bar in this video and I will show you how you can use progress bar and let's say progress indicator also. Progress indicator and progress bar almost works in a similar fashion. So uh, you can see both at the same time how they work. Okay. So just take a progress bar and a progress indicator. Now go to uh, the properties of uh, this uh, progress bar, for example. So click here properties. And the first property here is progress, right? Now, when you uh, increase this slider, you can set the initial value to this uh, progress bar. And this progress bar works from zero to one. Okay, so the maximum limit is one and minimum is zero by default. So whenever you, uh, you know, set your bar at the middle, it will be 0.5, right? Same works the progress indicator. So it works between zero and one. And when you uh, slide the slider to 50%, it will show the 50% on the progress indicator. Okay. So uh, let's see how we can uh, manage these uh, indicator and progress bar using these button. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give some ID to this progress bar and progress indicator. So go to the code and select your progress bar. And for example, uh, the ID is PB for progress bar and select uh, progress indicator and the ID I'm going to give it uh, is PI for progress indicator. Okay, so progress bar is PB and progress indicator is PI. And uh, one more thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, add a method here. So I have already created this button click method in the last video. I'm going to create one more method, for example, button to click method, which I'm going to uh, create in this video 
to uh, decrement the value now save your fxml file and then go to your project and uh, refresh your uh, project here and now in here first of all we will declare the variables for uh, progress bar and progress indicator so inside your main controller.java class the, just declare these two uh, variables which are progress bar and progress indicator right and uh, this must be same which you have given in fxml file so we have given uh, for progress bar pb and progress indicator pi id right and just add the import for progress bar and progress indicator next what we are going to do is we are going to take our progress bar variable and then we will call a method called progress property on it and to bind the progress property to any other property we use a method called bind so just call a method called bind on it and then it takes the property as an argument okay so we already have created in our my number dot java class this function which is number property so just copy this number property uh, function name and then go here and take your uh, my number class object which was uh, my num and then call this number property here so what this code is doing it's uh, binding the property of the progress bar to the property of this number class okay and it's doing it in one direction so whenever the value of uh, my number changes the progress bar will be changed accordingly okay and the same we are going to do with progress indicator so just copy the same code but just change this variable name here next what we are going to do is we have already created this button click event for this button which is button one and now we are going to create the second method for the button two okay and we have named the method for the button two here you can see here we have named it button to click okay so just give the same name here and in here we are going to subtract from the value of the number okay so because progress bar limit is in between 0 and 1 so what we are going to do is we are going to increment the value by 0.1 so 0 0.1 we will increase whenever we click this button and we will decrement the value so minus 0 0.1 okay so we will decrement by 0.1 and we will increment the value by 0.1 and let's change the text of these buttons so it will be clear that this is positive and this is negative button so just uh, select your button and go to the property and let's change it to plus symbol and the other to minus symbol okay and save your fxml file and refresh your uh, project in Eclipse and save all of your code and run it now. Server so app is running now. So first of all, I'm going to uh, just click this uh, positive button and let's see what happens. So whenever I click this, it's increased by 10% or 0.1, okay? Once again, 0.1 and you can see the value in the label here, right? So it's increasing 10% at a time. And whenever you click this uh, negative button, it's going to decrease the value in the progress bar and the progress indicator. So this is how unidirectional binding works in JavaFX. And why it's called unidirectional binding? Because whenever we change the value using this button, the progress bar uh, you know progress changes but opposite is not true here so we can't change the value or any properties in the button whenever we change the progress bar right it's only one directional so whenever you click the 
button it increases or decreases the value in the progress bar but you cannot make it bi-directional because you cannot set any value to the progress bar or progress indicator and this is exactly what we are going to see in the next video how we can achieve the bi-directional binding in JavaFX. So stay tuned and please rate, comment and subscribe and bye for now.